and you go back to the Slovakia game, they were 30 seconds away from going out. So then when you stay in the tournament and then you go through on penalties, all of a sudden the momentum shifts and it shifts into your favour where inside the camp they'll think as though their name's written on the trophy, which psychologically gives you a huge um, impetus when you're going into games and it makes you resilient, mm. makes you hard to, to, to get beat. Um, you've also got players like Cole Palmer who can pick a pass. The goal is uh, at this world, maybe De Vrij was a little bit tired because I think it looked like a tired defender because normally if that's the first five minutes of the game, I think De Vrij slides across or he thinks Ollie Watkins can't score. But that is what he does. Harry Kane doesn't score that goal because he wouldn't be there. He wouldn't make that run in behind. That's what Ollie Watkins does. Unbelievable. Smart change, top timing, top finish. And what an impact he'll have. He'll certainly be a player who will take a lot of confidence and enthusiasm into that final. And you can see he was the change maker, Oli Watkins, today. Just 12 minutes played, but four key touches and uh, that shot, which was the difference, that goal, which sends England through to a final. What a moment for, for the player. And Patrick Don's right, it, taking that enthusiasm with that last minute winner into the final, even if they may come in as slight underdogs against the Spanish team that have been, well, unstoppable to this point, that's the perfect way to win a, a semi final. I think, yes, if you look at all the England matches, I think semi-final is something which you can say at least they dominated that position. They had, they did create chance, uh, chances and, uh, and what a winner as well. So I think looking at all the matches, semi-final, if you have to say they deserve to win the match was today's game compared to the rest of the matches. Yes, I think the referee played a major role in, in, in the penalty, <laughs> which was a decisive moment. But overall, I think today's game was much, much more, more improved. And I think once they have started changing with three defence, 3-4-3, um, three, three, I think you can see a bit of different uh, England side. And uh, that gives Bellingham and Foden a lot of opportunities to get into balls and get into those uh, open spaces. So I think it's a completely changed side after the formation change. We'll break some of those key moments down very shortly. But Ollie Watkins, he was announced as the UEFA Player of the Match. Let's hear what he had to say post-match. Ollie, well done. Player of the Match, moment of the match. England through. To a final on foreign soil. I know, unbelievable. I've been waiting for that moment for for weeks, for weeks. You know, it's taken a lot of hard work to get to where I am today, and um, grateful that I got the opportunity and I, and I, I grabbed it with both hands. And uh, I'm delighted. I'm delighted. Uh, talk, talk us through the goal. I swear on my life, my kids, my kids' life. I said to Cole Palmer, "We're coming on today, and you're going to set me up." And that's why I was so happy with Coley when he... I knew as soon as he got the ball, he was going to play me and you've got to be greedy, touch and finish. And when I've seen it go in the bottom corner, oh, that's the best feeling ever. And the manager's had a bit of criticism for not making substitutions early enough. He's got it dead right tonight. Look, there's been a lot of cri criticism, but at the end of the day, we're in the final and that's all that matters. So forget all the outside noise, we're in the final. And to sum it up, for this team now, you've seen last-minute overhead kick equalisers, penalties, a last-minute winner tonight. Something feels special here. Yeah, exactly. We've got that kind of bounce-back factor, you know, going a goal behind, but we seem to it seems to kick us into gear and, and we never give up. And we've won on penalties, we've come from behind. Um, yeah, one more game now, one more game. Ready for Spain? Yeah, ready. Player of the match, Ollie Watkins. Well done. Cheers, thank you. Deservedly so, Ollie Watkins there, the player of the match, the moment of the match. And you can see the comeback men, of course, England, the first side in the Euro, Euro Championship history to reach the final despite trailing in both the quarterfinal and semi-final en route to the final. It is something that's required. They've showed that resilience, that grit to work their way back into matches. It's not easy. And they've done it now on consecutive occasions and being the first to do that. That is a telling factor, Patrice, for, I guess, the strength, the unity of this group. I mean, uh, don't say a word and I love in life is resilience. You know, no matter what we, we can say about uh, this team, they never give up. They're suffering a lot. I know Walkins just like throw away all those critics. And, you know, you have to focus on your team, believe in it. but. You know those games you win in the penalty. Don was saying momentum. I think they, they they take it. This is the this is why I think they are in a, in the final because of that resilience. Because apart from that, they didn't show us 
anything. I think in quarterfinal, things start changing when they, charge, they, they change the system. Today, they have an amazing game. But like I say, for, before the game, I didn't matter about Netherlands or England playing well. I don't see them beating Spain. Simple of that. Well, they did enough to get through today. It didn't start well for them, though, because Javi Simon scored what was, for me, one of the goals of the tournament. And today, that was our strike of the day. Tom Fries. That's a good nick by Simons. It's Xavi Simons! It's a belting goal! He has given that the lot! And in an orange flash, the Netherlands lead! A wonder strike there by Xavi Simons. Sadly, not enough, but a goal that was, well, worthy of a semi final. Win, Don, for you, one of the goals of the tournament? One off. Um, yeah, I mean, you could you could rank that alongside. I think Arda Gula had a great goal early on in mm. the group stages. We've seen some terrific strikes from distance, but it was a lovely hit. It was the timing. It was the way he nicked it off Declan Rice, who showed his strength. Declan's a very strong midfield player, and he sort of bullied him off the ball. Maybe Declan was off balance a little bit, but now he's got his head down. Now he's thinking only one thing. Mm. Maybe there's options. Memphis to his left-hand side. But when you're on the edge of the box there, Get your head down, make sure the timing's good, aim for the top corner, try and beat the goalkeeper with a bit of power, and that was the perfect start. Perfect start, wonderful celebration as well. It was a really exciting way for the Dutch to start, but not enough in the end because, of course, they do crash out. I think on reflection, they'll be very proud of their tournament coming through third place in their group. They, they built, they built, but not enough in the end going out very narrowly. Now, there was a contentious moment in the match. Very contentious. We'll get there shortly because today's change maker of the match is that moment with none other than Harry Kane. So the fact that it's all the way along the ground gave Verbruggen no chance. Perfect penalty there by Harry Kane. His sixth goal in the knockout stages of European Championships, the most by any player in the history of the competition. But the penalty itself was not the talking point. Bai Chung, the, the penalty awarded was the talking point. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think the change maker should be the penalty against the decision <laughs> rather than the goal. Oh. Yes, again, it's a, it's a very, very harsh decision. I think, uh, you know, a lot of times I think a lot of referees don't give it. And yes, uh, if that was outside the box and the tackles were gone, that definitely there was it was a foul uh, and, a, and a possible yellow card. But inside the box, I think where it's, it's a very, very crucial decision. And sometimes, a lot of times, I think referees don't try and give. And he's not gone all out. I think he's stretching his leg. Uh, and, and just the core part of it. Which but who is kicks who? Who kicks who? Does Harry Kane follow through on Denzel Dumfries? I mean, if you were to freeze frame that, a second before Harry Kane took the shot, it's a 50-50. And I've seen Ronald Koeman saying to the fourth official, when Harry Kane struck the ball, he might have followed through on Denzel Dumfries. But so if you're going to go by emotion and you can go by a subjective opinion from us three, four, and you go, well, maybe one thinks maybe... But if you go to the letter of the law, what the law says, the referee said no penalty in real time. So that's not a clear and obvious error from the referee yeah. to overturn the decision. Mm. It's yeah, crazy. It, it, it's, a, it's, you know, we're going to talk the same. No, this is a mistake. Like, we debate, this is not a penalty. And even that, the, that corner kick... And you can see in the replay, you can see, like, John Stott put it outside. The rest the rule. Only the, the captain is allowed to talk to the referee. When the guy come to him, he book him. Mm -hmm. And he was right. So, no, he, 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 he didn't have a good game. And I think this, this changed the physiognomy of the game. Because I don't want to, you know, England deserve the credits. They're in final. But this was a massive uh, turning point. A massive turning point, a massive moment to make that call. But Harry Kane stepped up, he did what he does best, and that was convert. Let's hear from Harry Kane post-match. Harry, congratulations. England through to a final on foreign soil. Yeah, history, history made, but uh, amazing achievement. I'm so proud of everyone, every single player, every single 
staff, everyone, I'm so proud of them. It's, it's been a real difficult tournament and to do what we've done away from home is really special. But there's that feeling that there's one more left and we, we need to get that one on, on, on Sunday. What a moment for Ollie Watkins. Uh, we talk about being ready. We, we're a big team of being ready, everyone being ready. For when it matters, you might get five minutes, one minute, but you can make a difference. You can win us the tournament. And Ollie's been waiting, he's been patient. And what he's done out there is outstanding. What a finish. So I'm so happy for him. He deserves it. And we're going to need everyone again on Sunday. Over the, over the piece, did England deserve it tonight? I think so. I think we was a better team. I thought, especially in the first half, we had a lot of control. Even going 1-0 behind, we didn't panic. We stayed calm. Uh, second half, you know, there's a few tight legs out there. But uh, overall, I thought we deserved to, to win the game. And with a finish like that, he deserves it. Another goal for you. Were, was it, were you fortunate to get the penalty? Were you surprised to see it awarded? I don't know. My foot's hanging off, so he definitely caught me. But... Uh, yeah, look, sometimes you get him, sometimes you don't. I was happy to, to step up uh, and see that one go in the back of the net. It was a nice, uh, a nice feeling for sure. And now, you know, I'm just happy to, to be through to the final. Spain, now the challenge. Another unbelievably tough game. You know, it's going to be really difficult. We know that. Um, but we're there. We got to the final. And it's one more game to make history. Uh, and that's what we're excited about. You know, it's been a tough journey. Uh, but it's one more. 90 minutes, 120 minutes. Penalties, whatever it takes, uh, we'll be there. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> Such an impressive display by Harry Kane. Cool from the penalty spot. Very cool with his post-match words there. He really does have the qualities of a great leader. I thought he spoke really well there. You could tell that he was passionate. But at the same time, I think it's an indication on how I think he feels about his teammates. He mentioned the staff. He mentioned everyone behind the scenes. But he mentioned Ollie Watkins. And when you're a number nine, your tendency can be a little bit selfish. Mm. I got a genuine sense there that he was really happy for his teammate. Mm. He was really sincere. He was happy that his teammate come on. He said one minute, five minutes, ten minutes, wherever it might be. The squad's there to make a change, make a difference. And I thought, I thought that was outstanding from Hurricane. I thought he spoke really well. Uh, no doubt about that. And, of course, thanks to that Watkins goal, England go through to a final on foreign soil for the first time in their history. Not only thanks to the Watkins goal, but also thanks to today's turning point. It was a wonderful save by Jordan Pickford. In by Fairman! Oh, what a save, Jordan Pickford! Point blank. Well, it's good anticipation. I think makes it easy for Jordan Pickford. Tonight's turning point, Jordan Pickford, he's been important at key moments for England and a key reason as to why they are through to another Euro final. You can see the joy in his face there. He has really been important at those key moments and we saw Don another key save tonight against the Netherlands. He's got character, hasn't he? Everton fans absolutely love him. He's kept Everton in the... Premier League for the last two or three years, but it must be hard for a goalkeeper because I never really got the sense he had too much to do. Mm. He was quite quiet. The defenders in front of him defended quite well. So this is, I think, what it takes being a goalkeeper when you haven't got too much to do, but you're concentrated at the most important time. I think that's what he's saying to his defenders there. And it was an awkward save because he wouldn't have been expecting it. It was a sort of late hit off Van Dijk or Carl Walker, however it came off. Good save. Great save, Pickford. They, they just it feels that they do have that experience. They do have those winners. They do have those players that have been. That's why we did discuss the fact they have gone deep into tournaments recently is a key reason as to why they are. Well, they find themselves there in a final again. They did it in front of a very special crowd, of course, the famous stadium that is in Dortmund, but a famous stadium with some famous faces in the crowd as well. I did see this during the match, so Ed Sheeran there watching on. Is he going to sing for the group again? <laughs> <laughs> he loves singing, he's coming home, and he will never come home. <laughs> will he be singing after a win in the final Sunday, though, by Chung? Do you think they'll do that? Yeah, but I think last year when he sang before the finals, I didn't, it, didn't, it didn't come home, so I'm sure I'm he's never, not too never sure been he's going to repeat that. But yeah, I think it's great for England to go to the finals in, in foreign soil, but. Uh, I don't think the sinking in the last Euro Cup helped, so I hope <laughs> they do something different. This I can time. confirm I was there. That was a wonderful experience from an Italian perspective. But in any case, <laughs> they get another chance this weekend against Spain. And largely, it's thanks to our play of the day today, which is, of course, the goal by none other than Ollie Watkins. Made it. Palmer. Watkins! England 
Jones. A big delirious drama. Well, remarkable. That's the only word I've got. Remarkable. Ollie Watkins with our play of the day there, but you can see here, second time lucky perhaps, only three managers have now led their national teams to multiple Euro finals. Gareth Southgate on that list. The two prior won one and lost one. My former manager, Bertie Vokes. Amazing. Not with Scotland though. 92. <laughs> He's my Scotland manager, yeah. That's right, Chung. This has been the question I've been looking forward to asking you throughout the entirety of the program, but you've said that Nothing would be down to Southgate if England are to go the distance. Watkins with that late goal there. Does Southgate get any credit now? I doubt still because if you look at... <laughs> no, you know, that doubt was, watching, was deep, eh? No, but look at all the matches, how they've won. I think it's been individual relents. And even today, you know, uh, Ollie Watkins, I think, is coming. That's a clean strike. But... Usually when you do substitution, last match, I think he gave uh, uh, even Tony just one minute when they were down. You know, they came in that Bellingham uh, back volley and then you usually don't substitute when you're down, especially when you bring in players like even Tony, when you're down 1-0 and you bring a player as striker one minute, what do you give that? Luckily, they had a hand throw and that went into uh, Bellingham's goal and went into extra time. But... Imagine the kind of management you'd go through. If the match had been lost, I think the respect and the relation <laughs> with event on you'd go, you know, it would really go down the drain. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you don't usually make, if you want to give strikers opportunity or any player, I think you give a little more time. Uh, again, but sometimes luck favours the brave and he's just getting everything right right now. Don, you are in the seat that David was in pre-match. Oh. oh. He brought... He would, I think that David would feel that Southgate brought Watkins in at a decent time to give him enough time to have him back than he did. Do you Come think on. that would be the, the defence to what Baichung has said? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, buddy, but I've got to disagree. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. I've worked with Gareth and, yeah. in, uh, you know, it's, it's all right sitting here saying he's a nice guy, but the question marks over Gareth over the years, I think Patrice said earlier, when you're an England manager or you're an international manager, it's about getting over the line. It's mm. about winning. Mm. Now, he's been here quite a few times now. But if you go back to when he took over, mm. England were a shambles. Oh, yeah. They were getting beat off Iceland. They were, I'm not sure what the rankings were, but they were a laughing stock. The press weren't close to the England camp. The players didn't let them in. The management didn't let them in. Yeah. Over the years, he's, he's, he's had unity. He's brought everyone together. The country are seeing a crop of players where they can sort of be proud of. Yes, they want a bit more, because we do, because we look at the players that they've got yeah. and they're outstanding. Um, but I would say, when you look back at the job that he's done, mm. getting into semi-finals of World Cups and finals, yeah. yes, you want to get over the line, but still, I, it's some job. I, I agree with you, Dan. The, the, I think the, the way he, he built it, you have to give him like so much credit. But my fear for all the England uh, England fans with the player they got, at the end, if he doesn't win, you know, he doesn't concrete, then a new manager will maybe, you know, have the satisfaction of the job. What Gareth Sulbe, I think. Every English fan should say thanks, uh, Southgate, and sorry. Mm. And sorry, because this guy has been like criticized, his family, himself, threatened, and he's there, he's there again. But I mean, like, if he doesn't win this final, pfft. See, my, my only point with Gareth Southgate is look at the kind of players he's getting it. You know, look at the young players that's come in. You've got Foden, which has come in. Uh, you've got Saka, which has come in. You've got uh, even Raspol is not Mano, in the team. Palmer, yeah. Mano, I think Sancho. that quality of players have come in, and he's been very lucky to get that quality at, at this time. And I'm sure that if there's any other manager, I think would have done the same or even go better. Mm. So I, I, I would wow. not say it's only completely down to Southgate because if you look at the quality of players, what they have today, you've got the best player in Premier League, you've got the best player in Bundesliga, you've got the highest goal scorer uh, in Bundesliga, Bundesliga, and you've got best player in La. Liga. When you've got those kind of players and when you see England playing, you don't recognize how Bellingham and how Harry Kane was been playing a couple of matches ago because this were the same players. They were superstars. They were outstanding in their club. And when they came and played England, they look a very different player. But apart from today's match, I think all the matches they've gone through is, is, is towards the last minute goal. England have the same, uh, I would say, problem like France. You know, for, for all the, the, the French people, it is a failure. Because you get Mbappe, you get all those players, the squad, the French squad, I think is, is one of the best squad. We got like so many players, that's why. And even Deschamps, when he win the World Cup with them, they still criticize him. 
because for that standard, people maybe sometimes we think it's, it's that easy, but we have that feeling they can do much better, but they reached two finals, so we have, I have to stay silent, you know. Don, he's going to come up against De La Fuente on Sunday. Does he have the tactical now, the tactical ability, yeah. awareness to match De La Fuente? Gareth does. It's whatever his players do, because you you, you, you're going up a calibre, because Spain are the best team in the tournament. And all of a sudden, I thought Shouten was terrific in the second half especially. But man for man, I would imagine, there's not many Dutch players who would get in the Spanish team. Mm. So now you're, come up, now you're coming up against Yamal. Exactly. Now you're coming up against Nico Williams. <laughs> now you're coming up against Fabio Nuriz. Oh, well, now, now you're Rodri. coming up against Rodri. Rodri. So Rodri, Declan Rice is a great battle to look out for. Carvajal, I would imagine, will be back in the starting eleven. Mm. So this Spanish team are on another level, in my opinion, mm. to anyone in the tournament. Yeah. But in a one-off game, England might just carry all that luck all that momentum, mm. you know, the changes that he's, that he's made, you know, he's went from a sort of 4-3-3 three, three to three at the back, you know, defensively they've got a five, you know, so the structure sort of looks a little bit better. Mm. They've got weapons to come off the bench when they need it. You just feel as though in a weird sort of universe, their na name might be written on the trophy, but, that's, that's but it's Spain. I mean, that's what I mean, and I, I agree with you. We've done, you know, that lurk, the car, but they weren't facing Spain. Mm. And I don't think Spain will give them that time. No. I think if they score one goal, they will go for the killer, the second goal. They won't give them that time to again having that luck. Because at the end, OK, we can say amazing substitution, the right moment. I don't know what Southgate is feeling, but it's quite like luck. It's quite... If you, if you, look, if you look, sorry, if you look very quick, if you look at Daniel Marlin today, didn't really see him. Yeah. You look at Cody Gakpo today, nah. didn't really see him. Yes. Yamal, Nico Williams, Memphis, another yeah, level. Right, that's it. Well, of course, England did go behind in both the quarterfinal and the semi-final. Patrice suggesting that if Spain are to go ahead, they could kick on with it. It's going to be a fascinating final on Sunday. But before we get there tonight, all about England. Fantastic scenes there as England go through to the final. There's confirmation, the road to the final. Now two teams remain. We began with 24. Spain and England will play for the European Championship in Berlin on Sunday evening. Two very different paths to the final, very different group stage paths, but in any case, two teams remain. There's confirmation of the match. 15 July, 12.30 a.m. kickoff coverage beginning on 14 July at 11 p.m. How are we feeling in the lead-up to this match? Because it is a little early. We still have a few days. We have a few days rest here. In <laughs> oh, before finally. <laughs> no change maker, no, no. winning. Uh, Three days, no. amazing. But tell me, how are we feeling in the lead up to, to no, Spain? No, but I, I, I say it is, uh, for me, it's no brainer. Uh, Spain gonna going to win this game. Like I said before the game, I, I maintain what I say. I don't even give them a chance. Bachung? No, I think if you look at before the tournament, I think these are the two teams everybody would have predicted to go to the finals, most of the you know pundits. But I think it's going to be a fantastic final overall because two pa teams which are passionate about football, big fans supporting. So I think it's going to be a great final, hopefully. Uh, the best team wins. Right, from Mohan Raj, our Tamil commentators tipped England to win. Your thoughts? Uh, it's going to be difficult. He disagrees. <laughs> he disagrees. <laughs> Don? Um, I just think that if there's football gods up there and, Thank they're, you. and they're looking down Thank you, and they'll say, who's been the most entertaining, <laughs> who's been the best team in the tournament, that's been Spain. It's going to be a fascinating final because England have the experience. Spain have undoubtedly been the best team of the tournament. They've won all six matches to date. But again, England have done what all good teams do that win tournaments. They find a way and they've done it again. We're done for the evening. We'll all be back on Sunday for Spain and England in Berlin. Thoughts about Manchester United and Everton. The erstwhile great Manchester United are still seesawing. A draw with Spurs on the 14th of January saw them win five straight games or beat most of them just barely. Then came the awful loss to Fulham on the 24th of February in which they played a lacklustre game. Then came Sunday's derby where they lose one goal to three to the current league champions Manchester City, a game where they go a goal ahead, defend brilliantly for 50 minutes, eventually capitulating to the obviously better class of their rival. Regarding the manager Eric Ten Hag, there are still many complaints from pundits left and right. The lack of clear sense of direction or style of play, lack or poor quality of man management and constant poor recruitment of players. Since the 25% takeover of Man United by Jim Ratcliffe, it was hoped that Man United will progress to a more successful direction under his watch. Some pundits even think that Ten Hag might even be replaced come next season. Yet the stats show that he did not do too badly.
he managed 61 wins in all competitions in his first 100 games which actually is better record than either Mikel Arteta with 54 and Jurgen Klopp with 50. Thoughts on Arsenal and Tottenham? If not for that one-week blip where they lost to Aston Villa and bow out of the Champions League, Arsenal have been by far the most impressive team this season. They have the best defensive record. They blow teams away by huge margin of goals which leave them with the top goal difference, worth a point at least. Even after that week of disappointment, they are now pretty much faultless. It is not their choice however. They have to be because reigning champions Manchester City have games in hand, which if they win all the remaining games, there is nothing Arsenal can do about it, they will be crown champions for the fourth consecutive time. But the way Arsenal played this season, it will be a shame if they did not win the Premier League.